Today we are at the, one of the farm of the cluster farmers. Together we have to date uh, 31 uh, one acre farm of uh, cassava that has been planted. This is our effort as part of our response to this COVID-19. One of the model that we've used here is what we call in Fijian Sole Sole Vaki. And Sole Sole Vaki is basically coming together for a greater good beyond just oneself. They are all here today to participate in this uh, weed uh, maintenance for this farm. This is about two acres of uh, cassava and they've started uh, early this morning. They are all farmers. They grew up uh, planting sugarcane, but now we are at a stage where they've started to explore some other commodities, agriculture commodities that uh, can help uh, substitute or add on to their sugarcane crop. So one of the crops that they've moved into is cassava. Cassava is sold uh, locally and it also for export market. It is highly demand frozen in overseas, Australia, New Zealand, United States, and the local market too, for local consumption. It's, uh, it's gluten-free and some are starting to venture into making cassava flour. One of the models of Rice Beyond the Reef is we work with uh, what we call in our framework the existing table. Way before we move in into a community, there are people who are already assuming the positions of leadership or trying to do something to mobilize their community for a greater good. And we call that the existing tables. Here in this cluster farmers is Chope. And uh, Chope is also a farmer that has uh, tried to do a lot of work in the past uh, to mobilize the fellow farmers and supporting them in, uh, in their sugarcane farm and, and also to explore some other agriculture commodities. So all of you guys are sugarcane farmers, yeah. eh? All of us are sugarcane yeah. farmers. And what, uh, second generation or third yes, generation? Uh, all of us are third generation now from sugarcane. So, so you're the farm that you own, that was originally your, your grandfather, eh? Yeah. Grandfather planted sugarcane, yeah. then comes your dad, yeah. And now, yeah. now you are. But it is in your generation that you started to think of exploring other things. Eh? So, what else have you guys explored? Some of us are planting uh, pineapple, mm -hmm. but uh, we try to find other commodities mm -hmm. from sugarcane and pineapple. So, we think to plant cassava. Ah. So, that's how we work together. We call it cassava. So, we put on a sole sole uh -huh. That's how we work. So, we, already of us, we already have an uh, acre each of cassava. Mm -hmm. And with the Sole Sole Vac, you were able to do all of this. All this of is this. two acres. Yeah, how, how long did it take you to plant two acres of cassava? This two acres we will only planted in one day. One day, yeah. eh? So that is cutting of the planting material, yeah. land prepping yeah. and planting, all in one day. All eh? in one day. If we were going to do this on your own, how long would you have taken you? It would take uh, one whole week. One whole week to plant it, eh? But this is a way in which they can successfully shift from monocropping into intercropping uh, at a commercial level and, and successfully um, participate in, in, in that level of, uh, of supply, of quality and consistency to, to, to the market. This is a home biogas system, um, a highly designed Israeli technology, um, which works through natural process. Uh, we can feed it with uh, leftover food, vegetable peelings, uh, as well as uh, animal manure uh, feed into the system. This is the inlet. The Jason bag has water in it. It holds up to 1,200 liters of water, as well as anaerobic bacteria. The bacteria, it breaks down all the food that are being fed, decompose, and gives out renewable cooking gas that is stored up in this uh, gas bag. This gas bag holds up to 700 liters of gas, which can give two to three hours of cooking gas every day. The home biogas system would allow, allow me to make my own liquid organic fertilizer at home. This fertilizer contains macronutrient and micronutrient. 
This nutrient comes directly from waste. We ignore waste. This waste, once it comes inside, for example, we have P and K in um, uh, banana peelings. We have N in animal manure, in uh, cow manure, in horse manure. All these nutrients comes in here, gets broken down by this anaerobic process. Once it's being broken down, gets dissolved, it comes out in here in soluble form. Liquid organic manure rich in nutrient. The anaerobic bacteria, they releases methane gas. The methane gas travels up through this gas chamber, gets collected into this gas bag, and through this gas pipe, it goes directly into the gas stove. Free renewable energy. Go inside and on the gas and uh, do our cooking for two or three hours. Free gas. Before, when we, we wanted to use the gas, we have to go down to the shop. It takes uh, from here to the shop or to town, we have to pay another $15 for the fare to go and get the, the Fiji gas. Today, the Fiji gas is very expensive. Most of the time, the, the gentlemen, they go and collect the firewood. If the gentlemen are not there, they are in the farm or they are busy somewhere else. It's us, the ladies, we have to go and collect. Sometimes it's our children, we go together. Like in this season, we have to collect more firewood because we can collect the firewood during the rainy season. It's really bothering because uh, most of the time we have the smoke coming out. I had an eye infection. I went to the hospital for, to check my eyes and this is what they told me. It's uh, because of the uh, firewood smoke. I'm very thankful now because we have uh, a free gas uh, with no firewood, which you can cook for <laughs> less smoke, no smoke, <laughs> no smoke either. <laughs> then you just have to on it and cook whatever you cook. That's really nice. So now we can test this. You mind do a biloti? That means uh, come and have a cup of tea. This is what we call gravity drip irrigation. The power of the pressure of the water will make the water go through the main pipe and then from there going into this drip line. Inside this pipe we have a small plastic. This plastic, the water goes through it, slow down and then coming out as drip. Few of the benefits of the drip irrigation. First of all, we can put food what's coming out on the biogas, we can put it inside the tank. Once I open the valve, water will go together with the food. So it saves me time. I don't need to go and water. Just open the valve, right? Gravity fill it automatically. Second, the water go only to the roots. Don't know if you experience, but sometimes when you use irrigation or after rain, when it's the irrigation go and sprinkler everywhere or after the rain, we start to see some spots, black or white, on the leaf. Yeah? This is fungus. With the rain or irrigation, they get the mold. With a drip, go here, they don't get the mold. This uh, system can save us a lot of time. Doing that, increasing the health of the plant. The plant can give us more, more uh, vegetable or more yield, okay? Healthier, bigger, nicer, and more of it. 
Pump is fuel. Fuel is money. We need to think about all this stuff when we're making farming. What is the input? What is the output? Minimum input, maximum output. Okay, so I'm thinking about the water. Water is money. Until we move into a solar uh, pump. Now we start to give them water and food, they're gonna grow big. With cassava, if you do it proper with the drip irrigation and the biofertilizer, I think we can get at least 10 kg per plant. The popo that you know have leaves like that. Popo with irrigation, leaf will be like this. So the fruit becoming bigger, everything becoming bigger.